bumbling buffoons. That's what you are. Bumbling, condescending, demeaning buffoons. Don't forget your elbows. Hmm? <laughs> Who's worse, y'all? Who is worse? Riley or Nicola? Put it in the comments. That's what you do. Let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel, Sass here. I'm here for another recap of 90 Day Fiance before the 90 days. You know what I have learned through this season? The men who out here looking like who done it and what for, real must. Okay? Out here trying to run things. Out here acting like they Brad Pitt, Denzel, Idris. Damson, you're not, and you're lucky to have any woman want you. Let's start off with Nicola. Hey, y'all, Nicola, I'm gonna need for you to tiptoe on the edge of hell. That's what we'll need for you to do. Now, I know you on this media circuit tour to try to find Jesus, it ain't working out for me. Shot, you are. So condescending and demeaning. The way you talk down to this woman. And the red and why she stay. <laughs> Alright? Now y'all just had a good night where you was up there Tootsie rolling up there at that little club. Okay? Having a good old time. The Lord Jesus was nowhere to be found. It was up there in the secular music club. And then it's a new day, and here you go again. Now, I'm not going to go all the way into it, y'all. I can't spend too much time today because I got things to do. Now, I will say I ain't going to keep y'all, but every time I say that, it'll be a 40, 45-minute video. So, let me just keep to the chase. So, Nicola is still talking about his Catholic faith. And, you know, how he wants Misha to be this type of Catholic woman, devout Catholic. Well, hell, if it's a devout Catholic, I don't want to be no parts of it. Misha, please go home, okay? This man has done nothing, nothing, and proved himself to you for you to be doing all this extra energy about how is not telling his family about you. They ain't even told him. Don't even want to tell his mom about you. And he come up with excuse after excuse after excuse. This grown man still living with his mama ain't had no type of coaching. Is trying to tell you how you should live your life. Punch him in the neck. So here, they're going to meet up with a friend of his, okay? The only person that, you know, she's the met that's associated with him. Haven't met the family, but here's a friend, okay? So uh, apparently, throughout this little venture, she's been picking up stray cats and touching them and feeding them and all this. He has something to say about that. He has something to say about how messy the room is. Well, I guess, you know, since your mommy is probably cleaning up behind you, your room is probably clean. You are 40, 50, 60 something, looking like you're 80 something. Your old man got your mommy cleaning for you. Shut up, Nicola. So here he is, embarrassing Misha in front of the friends. Talking down to her in front of the friends. And here me, she is still deciding, still thinking, is this man worth it? Is this man worth me marrying? 
We supposed to be engaged, but yet he still keep me a secret. But Misha, your whole thing is why should he feel, why is he talking to me that way? Especially when he looked like this. <laughs> he looked like his breathstay. Only thing I'm going to say is, Misha, go home. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Misha, go home. All right? Child, let's move on. Amanda and Raz Van, Mr. TikTok. Now, did we miss a conversation? There is, it, it had to have been a conversation between Amanda and Raz Van before she even came, before there was a case. Some we're missing something because I believe that obviously Amanda must have told Razvan that she was going to drop it like it's hot. Razvan is losing his mind. He is willing <laughs> to blow her back out when she is on her monthly. He said, no, nah, I don't care about that. <laughs> okay, put a little blood on this sword. <laughs> I mean, and then here is insufferable Amanda. I can't. I don't mind me. He was like, wait a minute. Now, we haven't had sex since you came. And now you're telling me that you're on your monthly? So we're not going to have it for another week? And she was like, no. Mm -mm. No, my deceased husband wouldn't approve. Lord have mercy. Amanda, we are well aware that your husband has passed away. We are well aware that he is the love of your life. We are well aware that this is the only man you've been with. But you decided to pack up your stuff, leave your children, and go over there to meet Razvan. Now, why is he in such a tizzy? Because you ain't dropped it like it's hot. He ain't blew that back out. Y'all had a conversation. Now, since the cameras are rolling, you're brand new. That's what I think. And let's just put that aside. If she don't want to sleep with Razvan, fine. But it's her attitude. It's her holier than now attitude. Okay, Razvan done picked out, you know, a bathing suit for her. And instead of her being appreciative or saying, oh my God, you know, thank you. She was like, we need to go back to the, to the shop. You need to take that back because I don't like it. Okay, but there's a better way of you saying it while you looking at your face in the mirror. I'll scrunch up. You look like you suck on a bag of lemons. I don't understand why Razvan even won't you. She is so, she's another demanding one. Me, me, me. Let me tell you something. Razvan have been real patient with you. And no, it's not all about the sex. I get that, y'all. But it's her attitude that I would, if I was Razvan, I would have said, yeah. <laughs> That's what I would have did. You're getting on my nerves. She just seems so like she's not happy with anything. She complains. That's what she is. She's a complainer. And she thinks that Razvan should accept how she is because she done came over there. She has a deceased husband. But forget about his feelings. It's about the Amanda show. Help her go somewhere and say that. So they go into the little bathing shop soup or that little shop where they went. And here she goes. Okay, he was like, okay, which one? I like that one. He was like, oh my God, this is the one that I was going to pick for you. And so she was like, oh yeah, right. Oh <laughs> yeah, right. And so the the shop owner or the worker there was like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that he did. And she was like, that's Amanda. <laughs> Oh, 
Amanda, if you don't sit on this man's face, okay, that's what you do. But let me say this, when he leaves you or when he gets tired of you, when his balls is about to bust and he go bend somebody else over, I don't want to hear you crying about it. Because you have gave this man the opportunity to do it. You don't let that little creak in the door. Every week it keeps getting bigger, bigger, bigger. So when he does blow out somebody's back, I don't want to hear it. Go home. She's another one that needs to go home. Let Raz Van be happy because, see, we've done seen you, Amanda, suck all of the happiness and energy from Raz Van. Let's move on. Eli and David. First, let me just say this. Thank God for what I have. It ain't much. <laughs> it ain't much, but thank the Lord for what I have, honey. We have seen so many episodes, so many couples, so many travels during 90 Day Fiance. We have seen some places that will make you say, thank God for what I have. Sheila. She's already a little bit insecure with herself. She is um, jealous. And David... Um, hired a translator because he wants to be able to communicate better with her family because they're going to go, he's going to go and meet her family for the first time. So the translator, honey, <laughs> got me. I don't think the translator was trying to be shady, but it was just how they set it up for her to appear to be shady. The translator said, listen, okay, I'm here about it, about it. Okay, all right, I need to be here. I got hired to do a job. Now, Sheila and David have been together, what, two and a half years? And Sheila is, she tries to do sign language, but she's not a pro at it. At least she tries. She's learning. And so here is the translator. Translator was like, um, it took me a month. <laughs> here Sheila done been with this man two and a half years and she's still learning and here's this translator was like I got it done in a month that's all I'm saying it, it don't need to take me two and a half years it took me a month <laughs> so they're talking and Sheila is already about to break down in the tears Sheila says that the translator is young and pretty, and she don't know why David hired this person. We were good. So, child, she done started crying because she feels like she says she's jealous. And she don't want to lose David. Lord, have mercy. Honey, these men, they got the women crying. <laughs> oh, Sheila. Okay, so she did not want David to know that she's over there in the corner in the dark, you know, having a breakdown. The producer's like, "Is this? <laughs> do you want to talk to David about this?" And she was like, "No." <laughs> I'm like, "Girl, get it together. Give her attention." So it's time to meet the family. So here comes the translator, David and Sheila, and they go to Sheila's house. And y'all, we know they were having weather issues. They had the typhoon, okay? That, done come, that came and wiped off the roof, okay? Then they had like a fire. I mean, it's awful. It is really sad. And Sheila says that she is embarrassed at where she lives. Okay? Because she feels like that David may leave her because of this. Alright? The house is not good, y'all. Okay? The house is, you know, put together. You know, the father built this place. David is is overwhelmed. He said it himself. 
He's overwhelmed. He's in shock. He had no idea that this is how Sheila and her son, you know, have been living. Now look, I know several of these participants are in it for the green card. They just tried to get over to United States on this day, right here, right now. I'm saying, please go over to the United States, Sheila. I mean, listen, y'all can say what y'all want to. I want Sheila and David to work out. And for her to work out and to have some type of home, to lay her head, to have her, her son have something, they need to go over to the United States. They need to be with David and they need to stay. That's just that on that. Please, God, okay? So David is like, I, I see why she is, you know, embarrassed, okay? But he says she shouldn't be. I still love her. He had a little, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the son. He gave the son a gift. It was kind of awkward because, you know, her family is aware that David is deaf but they don't know how to handle that they don't know how to communicate even with the translator you know sitting there so it was it's just hard and sheila said herself that they were acting weird because they don't know you know what to do about they it's just an awkward situation okay you have a new man all right he's deaf you got cameras inside of your house that is not in the best conditions so it was it was a lot going on there it, it was a lot so y'all i'm sticking by i want sheila to get on over to the united states and take a son because the living condition that house is not it so let's move on fatla and dempsey i like them y'all I like them together. They're my favorite, my, my favorite couple right now. Statler has her issues, you know. Statler is very adventurous when it comes to that bedroom child. All right, she's swinging from the ceiling, from the chandelier. She got this toy, that toy. She's very adventurous, okay. And she don't mind telling it. But I like Dempsey and Statler together. And I think Dempsey would kind of tone her down just a little bit. So Dempsey and Statler, first night together. And honey, how cute were they when they were exchanging gifts? <laughs> honey, Dempsey done brought all the way from Thailand some bugs. That's what detoured her trip. She was actually being thoughtful and kind, and she thought about Statler. And what makes it so great is that she know that Statler have the love of bugs, and she actually brought something that Statler would love and appreciate. I just thought that was the best thing. It was so sweet, and Statler was just, she said, I smelt it. She said, I smelt it. She said, Buzz got a unique smell. She said, first I thought it was you. But you've been traveling, so I overlooked it. But no, nah, it was the bugs. It just tickled me to death. I love that interaction. Statler was appreciative. She loved it. And she was like, you know what? Here I am. I was thinking she didn't want to come meet me because she was, you know, late. But she was actually getting me a gift. Dipsy! You need to show these men how it's done. Okay, so another thing Dempsey gets a check mark for. She took a shower. <laughs> Dempsey said, let me get out these clothes and wash uh, my towel. And that's what she did. She went in there. She took a shower. And so Statler was like, uh, can I take a shower with Dempsey? said, no, I'm good. <laughs> Dempsey done put on some pajamas, honey. And Statler was drooling. Statler said, oh, my. God, look at that bubble butt. <laughs> Dempsey was doing everything she can. Dempsey was like this. <laughs> Dempsey said, look at it. You can't touch it tonight, but you can look at it. 
okay? So, Dempsey said that she's well aware of Statler and her sex drive and her being experienced. You know, it's, it's giving her a little pause. All right, she's a little insecure about it because she's not that experienced. But she said, you ain't getting none tonight. You may get it tomorrow, but you ain't getting none tonight. And so Statler was like, bet, bet. I mean, I don't like it. Can I at least touch your thigh? <laughs> Can I touch your shoulder? And it was also, oh, I forgot to tell you, Statler gave Dempsey um, a little, a little, um, what was it? A little, was it an ant? No, it had wings. Was it? She, she gave, Statler gave Dempsey some type of bug, okay? <laughs> it was just so cute, They them exchanging gifts. So, it was, you know, the next day, they had to leave their Airbnb, and they were going to Dempsey, who, re, who they were going to go to Dempsey's place, which she renovated. It was a little caravan. It was small. But hey, it was good for Dempsey. Dempsey had to go and know, look what I did with my bare hands. I did this. <laughs> you know, it has, you know, a place to lay your head. Got a little bit of a kitchen. I mean, you know, it has a bathroom. I can only do so much. You can do number one, but you got to go across the street for number two. <laughs> of course, here's Statler. Oh, God. Hmm. <laughs> It's a little small, and you know, I'm a city girl. <laughs> this is country lit. They ain't got no bath, I guess. I gotta go across the street to number two, okay. <laughs> so Statler's worried about how a city life and a country life is going to mingle, all right? But guess what, honey? <clears throat> they done took them a shower together, and they got their little boom boom moan. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We heard some moaning. I wonder if they got it on. They didn't show it, of course, but there was some moaning. Maybe they just messed around, child. And so what? If they did get it on, I hope they did. I am rooting for Statler and Dempsey. Statler, don't mess this up, girl. Do not mess this up. Let's move on. Y'all, this ain't going to take long. Jasmine and Gina. All right. I'm not going to stay on these two for long. Now they don't went and talked to a therapist. They having couple counseling because they're a hot mess. A hot mess. With, you know, um, Gino finding out about the boyfriend. Okay. He done gave up the prenup. He done gave that up. Now Jasmine's talking about the will. They've been fussing, fighting. They ain't sleeping together. It's just a hot mess. So they're thinking that this counselor can fix them. Bottom line is, y'all don't even need to be together. Okay? Gino, if you're so concerned about Jasmine not being who you think she should be, leave. Leave. And Jasmine, this may out your mouth. What, they've been together for, what, three and a half years, two and a half years, whatever she said? And they have only slept together seven times? I know I didn't hear that right. Seven times? In three and a half years? Or two and a half years? Seven times is the amount of times you slept together? Let me tell you something. When we first meet a fella, and I'm going to speak for myself, seven times is like in a day. In two days. Something's not right. So, of course, she's talking about that. And then she says that she was coming out of the shower. She told the story that she was coming out of the shower. And she said that Gino, she said, I was coming out of the shower. Trying to look good, smell good. And Gina was over there. He was gagging. I said, not gagging. <laughs> Gino, you who don't even know how to wash properly. Okay, you're gagging over Jasmine? But he was like, no, no, no. He said, no, no, no. That's not it. Okay, because just Jasmine is 
insinuating that Gino finds her repulsive, dirty, gross, her coochie smelling like star kissed. Meanwhile, look at Gina. He look like he got scabies or something. Gino smells. I'm sorry. He does. And so Gino was like, no, 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 that's not what it is. He says that the reason why he rejects her so much is because of how she is. He said, I don't want to sleep with her because of how she is. She don't make me want to be attracted to her. She don't make me want to want to blow the back out because she is so insufferable. Only thing we do is fuss, fight, fuss, fight, fuss, fight. Who wants to sleep with that? It's a huge turn off. I'm not going to stay on these two, y'all. It's the same thing every single week. Okay. They fuss, they fight, they make up, not having sex. They fuss, they fight, they make up, not having sex, child. They don't even need to be together at this point. Did I miss anything, child, with these two? Child, if I did, leave it in the comments. Let's move on. Last and most certainly least. <clears throat> Riley. Riley. Now, just last week, you said that you get strange looks because you're this big black man in Vietnam. Now, you are inside of a restaurant in Vietnam, raising your voice, acting like a two-year-old yet again, you buffoon bigums. So, we have Violet and we have Rob. And it's time to have a nice romantic dinner. That's what Violet wanted. And that was what, what Riley wanted. But see, Riley had another agenda. Riley got his big self up there on camera calling his homegirl to question Violet. I told y'all I was going to talk about it. And this is how I feel about it. Riley, you can go run in traffic during rush hour without that towel. I just want you to just sweat. Just, just sweat. Just sweat. How dare you, sir? How dare you, sir? <laughs> You're going to call your homegirl so she can question your girlfriend? Have you lost your mind? It was unnecessary, it was childish, and it was an ambush. How dare you? So we all know the story. They had a day nap. He deleted his. Violet didn't delete hers. And she has already explained herself. But he wants to bring it up again. But he don't want to ask again. He want his homegirl to ask. And the homegirl can kick hot rocks too. So, here she is talking about, oh, you look lovely, you look lovely. Yeah, um, why didn't you delete your date app? And so, Violet is like, what? Violet had the strangest look on her face like, you got to be kidding me with this. And so, here is Riley. Answer the question. Answer the question in front of his friend to Violet. Answer the question. Why ain't you answer it? You got something to hide? Voices getting higher. Violet said, are you crazy? I've already told you this, okay? I went to go delete the app. Password, I forgot it. End of it. Riley, you either choose to believe that story or you choose not to believe that story. But one thing, if I was Violet, I wouldn't keep explaining myself to you. I have told you what it was, and it's for you to accept or not. But if you're not going to accept it, leave. Riley is coming on here each week embarrassing himself. 
And if I was Violet, I would have looked at the homegirl and said, this is none of your business. Don't you have a man to tend to? Instead of you worried about me and my day now and my man, go worry about yours. Period. And so here is Riley talking about, oh, I'll call you back. I'll call you back. And he was like, oh, oh, oh. She said, I have done answer this. She's your friend. She, what are you talking Why are you letting her ask me stuff like that? So he was like, oh, well, she's like a sister to me. She's my family. Ain't your family? Buffoon, that's not your family. That's your homegirl. And so Riley justified his behavior in this ambush by saying, oh, so, so your family can ask me whatever they want to, but my family can't ask you. First of all, stupid, her family didn't ask you all kinds of questions. Her mother did. Okay? It was her mama. And her mama has every right to ask you whatever she want to ask you when it pertains to her daughter. Because you're acting and you're looking foolish. Now, just like Violet said, okay, if it was his mother, sister, brother, auntie, whatever, Okay, she gets that. But he's sitting here having a friend question me. That's not family. And I shouldn't have to answer her. You're spot on. Now let me tell you something. I can say a lot about Violet. <laughs> and I have. And I will. But this right here, she was in the right. And she had every right to get up and leave. Every right. And here is Riley talking about he's cursing. And he was like, beat it. Just beat it. He said, I ain't got to put up with this shit. Beat it. This, again, I say this, grown man who is acting like a two-year-old in public. Then he calls his homegirl back and said, oh, no, thank you. Thank you. She just cut up. She just acted a fool just now. She just acted a fool. Instead of his friend, instead of him telling, but see, what he did say is how he acted. Riley is awful. He's horrible. And that's just a fact. There is no way Riley and Violet need to be together. Period. Okay? Violet, let Riley back. back. Riley, go home. Okay? Violet outside, her voice was raised, shaking, honey. She done called him a psycho and all kinds of stuff. All right, y'all, that's it. All right, that's it. Okay? That's what I think about Riley and Violet. All right? To my new subscribers. Welcome to the family. Y'all know what to do. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, friends.